In today's video, we are going to push the boundaries of our color study using a gel plate and just going for it in terms of mixing colors, creating new combinations, new textures with the colors, and just generally making a study that really expands our creative abilities. When you go this deep into a color study, beautiful things are about to happen. I'm Jackie Bernardi, and welcome to my studio. In this video, we're going to be using the same colors that we've been using throughout this entire color study series. Right now, I'm using the Payne's Gray uh, Golden Fluid Acrylic. I'm using the Titanium White and some Naples Yellow from Lucas Crystal. And I'm simply just taking my Brer and mixing it directly on the gel plate. Uh, I enjoy doing this a lot actually, but most particularly when I am doing a color study because it's a great way to get the colors to blend, sometimes completely, other times not quite, like here. But it shows me different ways that I can make colors, or I should say different colors that I can make using the colors that were playing with in this study. This here's some rice paper that I'm putting down to pull up the second pass with these colors. I like the rice paper. It grips nicely and it releases nicely. And look at this. Get some of that gorgeous Naples yellow in there. You can see the distinction between the white and the paint's gray. And I still have a bit of paint left on the gel plate. And I'm going back in with some of the primary magenta. So aside from the Payne's Gray, the Naples Yellow, the Titanium White, we also have primary magenta. And I'm mixing that in now with some of this uh, watered down Payne's Gray. And I watered it down with the airbrush medium that was left over from the last video. And I'm not really trying to blend these out completely. I am interested in the colors remaining on their own. And here I'm just offloading some of the paint off of the plate onto this sheet of newsprint, but I'm digging the pattern and I may try to keep that pattern for use when we're nearing the end of the study. I think sometimes the offload paper is just as important as the direct prints that you get off the gel plate. I've done a couple videos on using a gel plate. Uh, you're welcome to go and watch those. I also have a free video based course uh, that I offer. There's a link in the description below and that will get you from the point of your first day with your gel plate through printing and mono printing, which is really fun. All right, and I'm just going to pull a print in just a moment, just re spreading the paint after the first pull. And this time I'm just using little pieces of cardstock that I have, and I'm going to place a few of them on here just to pick up different parts of the paint on the gel plate, but also to get some geometric type pattern some super clean lines on the print, which we don't normally get with a gel print. And it's blocking some of the paint from the paper. And this is just regular copy paper that I am putting on top of the plate now. I'm making sure that there's really good contact between the plate and the paper, which is a little bit more challenging because the paper is lifted by the cardstock that's underneath, but it's okay. And now I'm just using the Baron to really make sure everything is attached nicely. That um, sheet of rice paper that we just used before, I'm just using the edge of it to pick up what's remaining of this purplish magenta and Payne's gray on the side. So you can see, just pulled up a little bit on the side there. I like that. I don't know what I'll use that for. I never know what I'm going to use these things for pretty much. And that's part of the excitement for me. So here's the pull of the copy paper, and this is gorgeous. Lots of texture there. And this one here, 
that's interesting. That could be the start of something pretty cool. And again, getting that deep purpley from the magenta, the primary magenta and the Payne's gray. So I'm going to switch over, throw on some of the Naples yellow and um, spread that around quite a bit. Now I'm hoping that the paint that's remaining on the brayer will blend in with this yellow and create a, a new shade of yellow that maybe we haven't seen yet in the color study. I wanted to give it a big pop of color and so I am actually dropping on some acrylic ink and it is, I forget which green it is, but I'll list it down in the description. It is a very similar green to the sap green that we're using in this color study, uh, but I wanted it to be very bright and intense, and that's why I went with the acrylic ink. Uh, I'm going to do a whole video on using acrylic inks on your gel plate, but for now, I just wanted to increase the pop of green. So that's why I added it in with the Naples yellow. And uh, this is just regular copy paper, burnishing it out with the heel of my palm. I normally take my rings off when I work on the gel plate because I don't want the rings to make a pattern. Uh, but this time I just chose to be in care, uh, conscious of using the heel of my palm. Oh my gosh, I love this. <laughs> I really love this. Um, this is when grunginess feels so good. And don't worry, I'm going to um, really spend some time showing you the detail on these pieces of paper later. But right now, what I just want to do is I want to work fast in using all the colors that we've used in this color study and seeing what the unique take comes from using it on the gel plate as it's manipulated with the brayer as opposed to uh, blending it with a brush or a palette knife. Every step of this color study has introduced new and different ways to get to colors that we might not have been able to get to otherwise. So here I am just pulling a palette knife very gently across the surface of the gel plate to remove some of the color mix there. And I'm going to take this piece of paper that I had uh, that was the offloading paper and I'm going to print directly on the offload. I wasn't anticipating doing this, but it felt right right now. Okay, and I want to pull up as much paint as I can without having to wait in between pulls. Uh, so I really want to make sure that it's adhered well and that's why I'm using Baron. And I love this. I love how this came out. Very interesting patterning there. And the best part is there's still paint on the plate that can be utilized even more. So I'm going to throw on some titanium white here and some of that uh, Naples yellow that's been mixed with the airbrush medium. And that, again, was from the uh, video number three in the series with the tissue paper. And so these are thinner now because they've been mixed with the airbrush medium. So I want to make sure I have good coverage. But what I like about it is it's already transparent, which I think has the potential to create a really cool effect in the print. So I've done this in the past and it's a fun exercise. What I'm using here is drywall tape. It has no coating on it, it's paper, but you would find it in the hardware store and it's called drywall tape. And what I really love about this is it absorbs deeply any paint that you put on it, uh, unless you gesso it first, which I did not. So this is just the raw paper and I'm putting it on the gel plate to use as a pull, but I'm also 
going to paint on the back side. And that's something that I haven't really addressed very much in this series, but it's something that I do as a regular practice. And that is when I am painting paper, and particularly when I'm doing a color study, I'll use both sides of the paper. So on one side, maybe I will have hand painted with brushes. And then on the other side, I might have a gel plate print or I may have a pattern on one side and a solid on the other side. It just gives me more options using less paper. So I let that set overnight because I really wanted the paper to pull as much paint up as possible. Now, what I put on top was a piece of deli paper. It's a 12 inch by 12 inch square of regular wax deli paper. And I just wanted to pull up the remaining paint that was between the pieces of the drywall tape. And I love that. Those are fantastic. I love having a stash of thin lines of, of beautiful patterns. Uh, they can always be used in your art projects. And now, uh, like I said, I was going to paint the back of these and I am, I'm just using the uh, primary magenta, just raw over it. Uh, again, this is going to absorb very quickly into the paper. In fact, so quickly that it's not going to spread as much as I would like it to just by using the roll roller because it's already drying. So I'm going to use my brush here, which still has some of the, um, it still has some of the Payne's Gray on it, and maybe even a little bit of the blend between the Payne's Gray and the Naples Yellow, and it's creating this beautiful striated, blended, uh, almost ombre color on the back of these papers. And so I'm just going to pull off some of that paint in between the uh, drywall tape and probably on the drywall tape too. Yeah, that came off. Oh God, that's beautiful. So I have a sheet now of just pretty much solid color that is gradiated and I like that. But now the back of all these strips have a solid color, whereas the other side is highly patterned. <gasps> yep. I absolutely love how these came out. This is incredibly exciting to me. So I'm going to pull the rest off. Yep. Love these. It's such a satisfying feeling when you pull the tape and something really beautiful and not quite expected comes off. And that's one of the things that I love about monoprinting on a gel plate. You never know exactly what you're going to get, but you're usually very happy with what you get. So I want to touch on something here. In no part of this series have we been trying to create a finished piece of art, not when we were hand painting papers, not when we were working uh, with the colors on tissue paper, and not here either. What we're looking to do is push the boundaries of what we think these four colors can do, right? That's literally the exclusive purpose of a color study. It's a learning process. It's, it's like science class, right? And you just sit there and you think you might know what's going to happen, but you're not really sure. And that's the discovery that makes you as a creative grow and develop and find your own artistic voice. This is how it's done. It's just basics that get you there. So again, this is some newsprint. Um, I have not been loving the sap green throughout the series. I'm just going to tell you that right now. Um, I don't hate it, but I don't love it the way that I love some of the other colors. And so I'm going to keep working until I find a way to really like it. I'm not sure about that piece I just pulled. Not really sure about the pinstripe, but we're just going to move on. 
So here's some titanium white and the Naples yellow. It's going over what's left of that uh, sap green and uh, a little bit of the magenta from the stripe from the last pull. Now, y'all have probably been wondering why I left this piece of paper up on the wall back here. And this, it was exactly for this moment. I painted that paper, if you recall, in the first video in this series, and it was just a way to get all of the colors that we were using on one giant piece of paper that could be used in a million different ways. One of the ways that we're using it right now is offload paper for the gel plate, right? So instead of having a piece of paper next to me like I normally do, I'm just offloading directly onto that piece of paper on the wall. This is super freeing and I encourage you to try it. I have created some of my favorite textures and some of my favorite collage pieces doing just that. So I've got the newsprint, I'm pulling it off. Oh, I like that actually. I like the little punches of the green coming through, that red stripe. Uh, that could be very interesting, depending on the type of collage I'm creating. Back to the Payne's Gray on top of that Naples yellow, and there's still a little bit of the satin green in there. I'm going to push this around. Mm. I love how dark the Payne's Gray gets. And I'm also going to offload this onto the wall as well, so I can pull off some of the paint. There's quite a bit of paint here. And just using a regular piece of copy paper to pull this print. Get the Baron to get the paper to adhere really well. And then I'm going to put this off to the side because I want it to dry. Now we're back. Uh, we jumped ahead in time about four hours, I think, six hours maybe. And uh, I, I'm going to pull this print that we just rolled out, um, but I'm going to release all the edges first because, number one, there was a lot of paint on the plate when I rolled it out. And two, if a piece of paper is going to rip during a jelly pull, it's usually going to happen because you didn't release the edges first. So I released the edges and now I'm just pulling back slowly in anticipation. Oh, yes, this is gorgeous texture in here. It is dark. This is a dark piece, but there's nothing wrong with creating the dark pieces in a color study too. You need to have all the values. Oh, I like that a lot super crisp looking to me. All right, headed back to more of the primary magenta, the Naples yellow, the Payne's gray, and yes, even the sap green. What am I making here? I am making deep chocolate brown. When I look at the color mixing page that's over to the left of the screen, in there, the mother color, meaning the mixture of all the colors we we're using, except the titanium white, that's for tinting. But the mixing of the actual four colors created this gorgeous chocolate brown. And I wanted to have that come out through the gel prints too. So that's what I just did. I mixed it directly on the gel plate with the brer. So it will not be perfect, but it looks pretty darn good. I like that a lot. Now there's still quite a bit of paint on the plate, so I'm gonna put the other side of the newsprint down and see what I can pull up. Oh, now that's interesting. Look at that. You can really see where the magenta was on the plate. That is, that's cool. Okay, we've got some Payne's Gray, some white, 
some sap green and we're just going to mix that about this is a nice color it's like a deep deep teal but as i roll it out not teal um mm, it actually looks like a historic color like a really historic blue type color, blue green color. So I thought this would be fun. Um, I have a box here where I keep um, cutouts. And a lot of these cutouts, these particularly that you're seeing here, these came from um, the plastic dividers that you have sometimes in three ring binders. And I just cut them up. They, they make a great mask on a gel plate and I, I think people should just have a box of these things that they can throw down on a print at any given time, not overthink design and just go with it. And so I really didn't have anything super patterned uh, in this session of gel printing because that really wasn't the point of this session. But I got kind of a wild hair and I thought I'd give it a try. So that's what I'm doing now. So on top of the paint that was already on the plate, I put the pieces of plastic and now I am kind of roll mixing uh, the Payne's gray and some titanium white on top. And this, this will create a variation between what's underneath the masks, what's on the mask, and what's underneath all of it when the final pull happens. So this is the first pull. Well, that's cool. <laughs> and that actually came out much cooler than I thought it would. I like it. That's going to be really fun to play with um, and use in the final color study video when we start pulling all of this together. That's really interesting. I like how it came out. And since we still have some great pattern left on the plate, I'm going to do one more pull. I'm going to do my best to grab all of that paint. This is just a mix of the primary magenta and the Naples yellow. I mixed it in a little jar prior to putting it on the plate. Um, I'm looking for a super thin coat here and that's what I'm getting. It's very transparent. And then I'm going to cover it all with the titanium white to get a really clean pull. Kind of excited to see what happens here with this. This is just a piece of three ring binder paper, some notes I took from something. I'm using this on the other side. Uh, it was just painted the um, Naples yellow with uh, primary magenta. And I'm just using that as the background. So here we are while I'm waiting for that to dry. I'm just going to go through and show you the papers that we've made today. I've zoomed in so you can get a better look at what we have. I love this. I, I just love that striate look and the, the depth of color on that one. And this here, I think the patterning is super cool. I particularly love the red over the purple. That'll be very useful. This, as you know, I like the punches of the green here and that little bit of red. This. I don't like it all, but it's part of what we did today. And learning that I don't like it is just as important as the ones that I do like. This was just a sheet that I was pulling extra paint off the gel plate with, but I'm happy with the way that came out. That'll be very useful in collage. This one here, um, I cleaned off the gel plate using the spray bottle with water and then took this print on some deli paper. I think I did that off camera, but I like how that turned out. Love this here. Love the patterning and the texture that's deep down. 
These will be really fun to use. This is like a Polaroid. I could use that as a Polaroid type project. Hmm. I'm going to have to think about that. This is a larger, maybe, Polaroid for the project. We'll see. Here are the stripes that we just did. Oh, I still had a stripe stuck in there. Hmm. Oh, well. I like this. I may cut it horizontally or vertically. I'm not sure. I might not cut it at all. Let me punch holes in it. This one, though, guys, this is my favorite one of the day. Look at that. It's wild. All right. I would have never paired those colors together for any reason, but I'm so excited that I did and that that's what came out. Here are what I'm going to call the salmon stripes on the deli paper. I like it. Here is the drywall tape with that gorgeous pattern embedded in it. And on the back, you have the really beautiful deep red. Love how that came out truly. An idea for using it would be to, you know, stagger them, which would look really cool, depending on what we're using it for. All right, let's grab that last pull. See what comes up. Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's really fun. I like that. And somewhere down in there, you can see the history of my handwriting from the notes that were written on it. Pretty cool. Like how that came out. So this is it. This is all of them. I'm going to spread them out now so you can get a visual field of how these four colors combined in different ways using the brayer and the gel plate can create really unique color formations. I love it. Thank you so much for joining me today.